Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to learn all about comparing fractions. I have a lot of great strategies for you, so let's dig in. All right, so let's start with understanding what a fraction is. I'm going to write over here that a fraction is just a part of a whole. And we're going to be practicing drawing these fractions that we're working with so that we can compare them a little easier. All right, so let's start with drawing, I think the most common and easy fraction to understand is one half. So let's start by drawing that. I'm gonna be drawing circles because I kinda of like starting with fractions, thinking about food like pizza or cookies or pie. It just helps me understand them better. So here is my one half. So think about the size of that. And then we're also next to it, I'm gonna draw the fraction one third. <clears throat> so there's my, I'm trying to draw the same size of circle so that it's easier to compare the pieces. Okay, so one third, how many pieces do I need to draw? Okay, you got it. I said third, so we'll draw three pieces. We'll cut it up into three pieces. That's a little harder to do, but there we go. And then I'm gonna shade in one of those. Okay, so what, what do you notice ha that happened to the size of those pieces when I went from half of the cookie to one third of the cookie? What happened to the size of the pieces? All right, you notice that it's got smaller, right? One third looks a little smaller than one half. Let's see if that keeps going. Let's draw one fourth and see what happens. So one fourth, again, I'm drawing the same size circle as before. How many pieces should I draw? Awesome, you got it, four pieces since it's fourths. Okay, so here's my four pieces, I'm gonna shade in one. Okay, and what do you notice to the size of the piece? Okay, awesome. It is getting smaller and smaller. So, you know, some people might argue with me though and say, well, that doesn't quite make sense though because my bottom number, my denominator is getting bigger. So how is the piece getting smaller? I want you to think about that for a minute and see if you can figure out why. Okay, so let's check your thinking. So the reason is because the bigger the denominator, I'm having to cut it up into more pieces. And so those pieces keep getting smaller and smaller. Think about how small that same cookie, um, think about how small the pieces would be if I had to cut it up into twelfths. So 12 pieces. Yeah, you, um, those pieces would be pretty small. I would much rather eat half of a cookie than one twelfth of a cookie. All right, so now let's look at a comparison problem. Now that we know how to draw the fractions and think about them, let's try comparing two fractions that we just drew. So I put one third on one side and one fourth, and then my circle in the middle is just a comparison circle that we're gonna draw a symbol inside of. So what do you think? Which is larger, one third or one fourth? Look up at that picture to understand too. Okay, you got it. One third is greater. And so I'm gonna draw my symbol going this way. I've got a couple of uh, suggestions for you for understanding which way to make your greater than or less than symbol. So sometimes what I like to do is I like to draw two dots closer to the bigger fraction and one dot closer to the smaller fraction and then I just connect. 
All right, great job. The other thing that I know I've seen a lot of people like is making an alligator that wants to eat the larger fraction or larger number. So you can always make an alligator um, out of your greater than, less than symbol. And that's pretty fun to do too. Okay, there's mine. All right, great job. Let's try another fraction comparison that are fractions that we haven't drawn. So maybe I'll pick one that we have drawn and one that we haven't drawn yet just to get some practice with a little bit more of a challenge. Okay, how about one half compared to one sixth? What do you think about that one? Without drawing this one, let's just think of it as what we've noticed in our pictures of what happens when the denominator gets bigger and all of our numerators or top numbers are one in this example. All right, great thinking. So one half must be bigger because that six tells us that the pieces will be smaller. They're cut up into six pieces. So I'm going to make my symbol going this way. All right. Let's do another example where my numerator is one and my denominators are different. Okay, so let's try one fourth compared to one eighth. Okay, which one of those do you think is the greater fraction? Even though we haven't drawn one eighth, I want you to think about what those denominators really mean. Okay, awesome. Four is going to be bigger pieces because there's less, you know, the cookie is cut up into less pieces, so they're bigger. With eight, it's cut up to, into even more pieces, and so they're going to be smaller pieces. Great job. Okay, now let me give you one where the numerator is more than one. Let's see what we think about that. What if it was something like two thirds compared to two fourths? We're used to a one being up there in the numerator spot. So what do you think? What if I put a two there? Think about my picture that I drew and it might help you figure this one out. Okay, what do you think? Some of you may be needing a little bit more uh, help with this one. So I'm going to take my first pictures that I drew and I'm going to shade in two this time instead of just one. Let's try a picture. This picture may help us a lot. So I'm going to shade in one more third. So now does that look like two thirds? Yes, it does. And then I'm going to shade in one more on the fourths and then it looks like two-fourths. Okay, what do you think now? Great, two-thirds is a bit bigger. And that's because each of those thirds was also bigger. So it makes sense that, you know, when our numerators are the same, it makes it kind of easy to compare because then we just have to think about the denominator. So great job. Okay, so now we're going to talk about comparing two fractions that have the same denominator and their numerators are going to be different this time. So let's see, I'm going to draw some fourths and um, I'll just shade them a bit differently. So the first one, I'm going to shade in one fourth. Okay, I'll write it down and then make a comparison circle in the middle so we can put a symbol down. Then I'm going to shade my second picture with three fourths. Okay, so now which one do you think is bigger? 
one fourth or three fourths. You can use the picture to help. Okay, great. You can definitely tell from that picture that three fourths is a lot more of, let's say these are cookies again, it's a lot more of the cookie than one fourths. So I'm gonna make my symbol. I'm gonna give three fourths two dots. Let's try that strategy. And my one fourth, I'm gonna give one dot. Then I just connect the dots. And I've got the symbol going in the right direction. Okay, let me give you another couple of examples. So let's compare two thirds and one third. Okay, um, let me draw a picture real quick. You might already have an idea though without a picture of which one you think is larger just by looking at the numbers and thinking about what they mean. But let's just double check. I'm gonna draw thirds and shade in two of them for two thirds. Then I'm gonna shade, I'm gonna draw another one and shade in one third. Okay, what do you think? All right, and hopefully it matches what you thought when you first looked at the fractions. Two thirds just sounds bigger. And then it also looks bigger in the picture. So let's make our symbol going that way. Okay, great job. All right, so I'm also gonna show you today how we can compare these fractions with the same denominator on a number line also. So I am gonna draw a number line here and I want you to first tell me what fraction I'm creating. What uh, denominator am I creating here? Here's my zero, and then I wrote my one whole. And how, how do we know what fraction this represents? What fraction each of the lines represent? What can we do? Okay, maybe you said we can do some counting to see how far or how many jumps it takes to get to one. Let's try that. So I see one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I've just created fifths with this number line. So here I've got one fifth. What's my next line represent? Great, two fifths. Then you got it three fifths and four fifths. Okay, and then what about five fifths? Oh yes, so five fifths would be equal to one whole. It's the whole thing. Okay, so I'm gonna put two dots on my number line. I'm gonna put one on four fifths and one on two fifths. And which one do you think is greater? I'm gonna, below that, I'm gonna write down a comparison statement. Which one of those, two fifths or four fifths, do you think is greater? And the number line might be able to help you figure that out quickly. Okay, awesome. Four fifths is the closer one to one whole, so that's gonna be the bigger one, so great job. All right, let's write our symbol down whatever strategy you, you like the most. And you got it, great job. Well, I hope you learned a lot today. I hope you can use these skills in your math class or at home. And I hope you have a great day. Bye.